Today we're going to be taking a look at 7.3 logarithmic functions. We're going to talk about what a logarithmic function is and how we change from exponential to logarithmic functions. So the first question that we're going to take a look at is how many times would you have to double one dollar until you reached eight dollars? So if we started off with one dollar and we wanted to double it, we multiply by two, that's going to take us to two, we double it again, we double it again, that's what's going to take us to eight. So to be able to double it, three times we're going to get eight dollars. What if we wanted to do this for five hundred and twelve dollars? Well instead of trying to do a bunch of guess and check to figure out how many times would we double it, we could try to write out an equation that could help us come up with an answer a little bit quicker. So if we take a look, we keep multiplying by two and since we keep multiplying by two that's actually going to show us our growth factor because we keep multiplying by the same value so we're actually going to be able to write this out as an exponential function because we have this growth factor of multiplying by 2. So when we write out our exponential function remember it's y equals a times b to the x our growth factor is b there's raised to the x power. The a value that goes out in front is that value that we start with which the amount that we started with was one dollar so we're going to have one and that's going to equal y. There's our exponential function that we can use to help us find out, you know, how many times we're going to have to double the 1 to be able to create $512. That 512 is really the y, so we could say 512 is equal to, don't really need the 1 because it's multiplying by 1, equals 2 raised to the x power. Now, this is a little bit easier of a guess and check method, but it would be nice if we had a method to be able to get this x by itself, with the x being in the variable. That's what we're going to introduce today is this thing called a logarithm allows us to go through and get this variable by itself. A logarithm is just the exponent of which a specific base is raised to obtain a given value. The logarithm since it's equal to the exponent saying that that exponent is going to be by itself is really the inverse of an exponential equation. This is how we change back and forth between the two. And this really, this formula that we have here is really the big idea for this section, is how do we change from an exponential equation to a logarithmic equation, and then back and forth. Is these previously unsolvable equations that we've had this variable in the exponent, we're now actually going to be able to solve by using this logarithm to get that variable by itself. And that's the key thing that this does, is we take this x here that's in the exponential equation, and that x, when we change it to the logarithm, since the logarithm is equal to that exponent, it's going to get that x by itself. So it says b raised to the x equals a is the same thing as log base b of a equals x. The way that we read this is it's log base b of a equals x. That's the way that we're going to read that every time that we see a logarithmic equation. Log base b of a equals x. So we're going to take a couple problems to practice actually changing from the exponential to the logarithmic equation. And for the time being, it's just going to be matching it up. The b here goes here, the x, the exponent goes by itself, and the a goes right there. So let's take a look at a couple examples of being able to change this back and forth. So the first one, 3 to the 4th equals 81. Right now, this is in exponential form, and so it's b to the x equals a. We're going to need to change this into log base b of a equals x. So the first thing we want to do is we want to identify the b, which is the base being raised to an exponent, which is 3. The base of that exponent is going to become the base of the logarithm. Easy way to think about that is base goes to the base. The base of one will just be the base of the other, whichever way we're thinking about it. So log base b, which would be the 3, of a, which the a, when we look in the exponential, is that value that's by itself, not the one being raised to the exponent, so the 81 equals x, which x is going to be our exponent, so equals 4. So log base 3 of 81 equals 4. If we take a look at the second one, 5 raised to the first equals 5, we have our b to the x equals a, we just need to write it in this form. Another way to think about this is as you're going through this, it goes log, or base b of a equals x, is we see the b, then we're going to go to the a, which is on the opposite side, and then we're going to come back and we're going to go to the x. So we start off with the b, the thing that's being raised to the exponent. We're going to go to the a on the opposite side of the equation. Then we come back to get the x. Log base 5, 
We go over to the other side to get the a. We come back to the exponent to get the x. Log base 5 of 5 equals 1. This one I want you guys to do for homework tonight. All right, let's take a look at converting the other direction from logarithmic to exponential. We see that it's log base 10 of 100 equals 2. Now we have it in this form. We need to change it into this form. So log base b, there's the b of 100, or of, of the 10. So it's going to be 10. There's our of a, so that's going to go on the opposite side. There's the 100. Equals x, there's the 2. The x needs to be our exponent. So 10 squared equals 100. We can do the same thing here. And just how we did this here, where it was b going across to get the a, and coming back to get the x, that same format follows here is b, go across to be able to get the x, which would be the exponent going into exponential, come back to be able to get the a, that's the thing that's going to be by itself. So there's our base b, so 8, we go across to be able to get that exponent now, to the 0 equals, we come back to be able to get the 1, 8 to the 0 is equal to 1. This third one here, I want you guys to try for homework as well. All right, logarithms are the opposite or are the inverse of exp exponents. So the rules that we have for exponents apply really to logarithms. We just see them written differently. Think about this. If we see this example here, when we raise a number to the first power, we just get that number that we have. Well, when we rewrite that in, in logarithmic form, we see those two numbers saying that the base that we had is just going to come out to be that same base. We see those two numbers right beside itself and then we're going to get the exponent to equal 1. Well, the rule that we have is any time that you're taking the log of something and that value that you're taking the log of is the same as the base, as these two values are the exact same, that log is always going to come out to be equal to 1. As in log of any random number base down here, if we take the log of that same value, it's always going to be equal to 1. And same thing here, look at this in exponential. Any time that you raise something to the 0 power, what do we always get? we always get 1. Well, when we rewrite that in logarithmic form, we see the 1 goes here and that our 0 is what it's equal to. Well, we rewrite that with a variable and we say any base that we have, if we are going to take the log of 1, that number is always going to come out to be equal to 0. And that's what this next slide is talking about. It's basically just saying these rules are the exact same. That any time that you see they, these two values here match up, the base and what we're actually taking the log of. If those two things match up, that whole thing, the log of that whole thing just comes out to be equal to the number 1. Same thing here. It doesn't matter what the base is, but if you see that you are taking the log of 1, the number 1, that that is going to come out to be equal to 0. And that works for any number that we have. This is what it looks like, what we're familiar with in exponential form, but when we change that over, that's what it is in logarithmic form. All right, the next thing we're going to take a look at is how to do some of these using mental math. Is a logarithm with base 10 is called the common logarithm. It's the common logarithm, it's the one logarithm that we can actually type in on our calculators, but the other thing is that when we don't see that actual base right here, we don't see that base, that means that it's going to be base 10. As in 10 is the understood base when you don't actually see a number. We've seen understood numbers before, like when you just have an x. Well, what's the number down in front of the x? It's a 1. What's the exponent that we don't see? Well, that's a 1. When we take the square root of some number, like the square root of 4, you take the square root of any number. Well, think about that word that you hear there, square, the number that we don't see is a 2. So it's going to be the square root of 2. Understood 2, understood 1s. When we deal with logs, it's an understood 10. So when you just see the log of 1,000, and we want to use mental math here, we could say, all right, we don't see a base, so it's going to be a base 10. We're going to try to figure out what is this thing equal to. So let's right now say that it's equal to x. Well, if we can't solve a logarithm of the way that it's written, a lot of times what we can do is we can change it back into exponential form, and that might be a little bit easier to solve. So let's take this change it to exponential. Remember our formula, log base b of a, equals x is the exact same thing as b to the x equals a. So log base b, there's the 10, raised to the x, which in this case actually is an x, equals what we're taking the log of, which is equal to 1,000. 
So we have 10 raised to the x equals 1,000. Well, what number do you have to raise 10 to to be able to get 1,000? Well, we know 10 to the first is 10. 10 to the second is 100. So 10 to the third is it going to equal 1,000. That means that x is going to be 3. So the log base 10 of 1,000 is equal to 3. Let's take a look at example B here. Log base 4 of 1 fourth. Now we actually have a number as our base. We don't know what this is equal to, so we could say it's equal to x. That's 4 raised to the x is going to equal 1 fourth. Well, if we take a look, we see a 4 and a 4. But the problem is this 4 is in the numerator, this 4 is in the denominator. If you remember what we talked about the last couple sections about negative powers, is if you take something and you have a negative power to it, that that's just going to take what the base is and it's going to flip the base. We're going to take the reciprocal of the base, as in 1 over that base raised to the positive power. So raised to the positive first. Well, here all we need to do is take a look at that 4 and say we need to flip that 4 to be able to get this one. And so when we flip it, to be able to get that one, 1 over that number is if we flip this, it's going to become 1 over 4. Well, since we just have to flip it to get that 4 down in the denominator, we already have a 4 in the denominator. We don't need to change that 4 anymore to get the 4. All we have to do is flip it. All we need then is just a negative 1. So x is going to be negative 1. And we take a look at this third one. Log base 10 of 0 0.00001. So log base 10 because we don't see the 10 and we're going to do the same exact thing. We're trying to find out what it's equal to so we say x. This is going to be 10 raised to the x. Power should equal 0 0.00001. Now when we have that there, this 0 0.00001 is, we want to change this into a fraction. That's going to help us actually see the 10. Well, the first decimal place is going to be tenths. This is hundreds, thousands, ten thousandths, hundred thousandths. So this is actually 1 over 100,000. That's what the same thing as 10 to the x is. That's the same decimal. Well, 100,000 is just a power of 10. We already said 10 to the third was 1,000. So to the fourth would be 10,000. To the fifth would be 100,000. So that's 1 over 10 to the fifth. We see the 10, we see the 10, but this 10 in the numerator, this 10 in the denominator, so we just have to make that 110 go down to the denominator with that 5 to flip that base. We need a negative exponent, so we see the 5. We're just going to need to make this negative to be able to get it down to the denominator. That means x equals negative 5. This last one here, I want you guys to try for homework. The last problem that we're going to take a look at is talking about being able to graph. If you want to try to graph an exponential function, what you can do is you can graph, or to try to graph a logarithmic function, what you can do is you can graph the exponential function because those two things are inverses. So if we can graph the one, we're going to be able to graph the other because we know how to deal with inverses. So let's take a look at this. This is going to be the original function that we're trying to graph, 3 to the x power. Here's the numbers that we're going to use, so let's just make a table. Our x's are going to be negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. We just need to plug those in to be able to get the y's. Let's start with a negative 2. 3 to the negative second. We have that negative exponent, so that means that we need to flip that base. We need to flip the 3, so it's going to be 1 over the 3 raised to the positive second power. That's 1 ninth. We do the same thing with the negative 1. We get 1 third. Anything to 0 power is 1, 3, and then 9. We plot those points, negative 2, 1 ninth, negative 1, 1 third, 0, 1, 1, 3, and 2, 9. And remember, this is an exponential function, so it's going to get closer and closer to the x-axis, but it's not going to cross the x-axis. And so there's our graph. When it doesn't actually cross that x-axis, it's getting closer and closer to it. What's that word that we use to call that? We call it an asymptote. And since it's the horizontal line, which is the x-axis, remember horizontal lines are y equals and the value that it goes through right there on the y-axis is 0. So we have an asymptote at x equals 0. To find an inverse function, remember, all you have to do to find inverse is literally switch the x and the y. So we can do that in the table to get our table, but for the function, we just want to flip, switch the x and the y. So here's our y, there's our x, we switch them, x equals 3 to the y. There's our inverse. Now we just have to solve for y. Remember, to get the exponent by itself, we need to change it into a logarithmic function. So we start off with our base, which is on the other side now. It's going to be log 
base 3 of this, so of x, is going to equal the exponent, which should be by itself, equals y. There's our inverse function. To graph the inverse function, we could try values for x, but we can really just take this table and go through and switch the values in our table. So the 1 9th, 1 3rd, 1 3 9 will become the x's. And the, the nice numbers, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2 will become the y's. We plot these, 1 9th, negative 2, 1 3rd, negative 1, 1 0, 3 1, and 9 2 will become those points, and we go through, we draw this. Just as the exponential function was getting closer and closer to the x-axis, our logarithmic function, if we take a look at it, it's getting closer and closer to the y-axis. So this one is also going to have an asymptote, but this time the asymptote is a vertical line. We write out our horizontal lines as y equals something, the vertical lines are going to be x equals something, and it goes through that same value on the x-axis, so x equals zero. So we actually have it an asymptote for both of these functions now. The domain and ranges, just from last section we were talking about we have to write out the domain and ranges with that set builder notation. Let's talk about our domain for the actual function for this one. Our domain, we're talking about the x's, so we need all x's such that what's going to happen? Well, if we take a look at the x's, it's covering everything from the left to the right, it's going to reach every possible x values, so we can say it's all x such that they are the real numbers. And then for homework, I want you guys to go through and I want you to name the range for the, for the function, the domain, and the range for the inverses.